This is the Criterion Creeps Podcast. And tonight we're continuing on getting through that Paul Robeson Portraits of the Artist box set. Part three, RJ, we'll be talking about Sanders of the River from 1935, directed by Zoltan Korda. And oh. Jericho from 1937, directed by Thornton Freeland, mm. everyone's favorite director. Um, Zoltan. How, let's do a let's do a gut check, RJ. How you how Get you me. feeling on week th- week three of Robeson? I gotta tell you, at the end of week two, I was feeling pretty rough, Jared. I uh, I didn't know if I was gonna make it through. I um I, I definitely questioned my abilities as a, a podcaster, um as a professional. Uh, I was I was not quite sure, but uh, coming out of week three here, I'm feeling uh, revitalized. I'm feeling fresh, um, and I think uh, I think uh, we might get them in this uh, the the fourth quarter here. You know, this third quarter, it's uh, it's about struggling back to uh, regain where we where uh, where we want to be, and uh, fourth quarter is about um, finishing it off and uh, sealing the deal. Yeah. You you didn't do enough staring off into the distance. And I uh, I also yeah, want to go. say that uh, I mean I know that whatever his plan is for us, uh, we will fulfill that. Whether we win or lose, we're uh, we're going to be fulfilling uh, the plan. What about the recent accusations made about your sex farm? Well, I just want to say that, like, in a lot of other places in the world, this isn't, like, uh, frowned upon. It's actually part of the culture, and it is, like, uh, it's completely um, it's completely accepted. So, like, I don't know why Western civilization hasn't, like, caught up with uh, the way these things work. But, uh, I mean, hopefully one day they'll realize um, what, what we have and what we can have. <laughs> Imagine t- tuning into the show, being like, "Ah, finally, someone on YouTube is going to review my favorite movie, Sanders of the River." I... Imagine. Hey, guess what, asshole? You get what you deserve. I think that is, if anything, it's the most appropriate way to open it up an episode like this, so that if this is, in fact somebody's favorite movie sanders of the river they should know up front what this what the next three hours is going to be that's right they should know so sanders of the river from 1935 directed by rj's boy zoltan korda zoltan it's a good hungarian name right here the tagline for this film rj Uh uh-huh he breaks loose in the jungle (laughs) who Um... who sanders Zoltan? Zoltan. 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 Yeah, he, I mean, maybe maybe it's the metaphorical he. Sanders. Um, A British district officer in Nigeria in the 1930s. So this is a contemporary film, folks. Depicting contemporary times. Sure, sure it is. Rules his area, his area, strictly, but justly. Mm-hmm. He struggles with gun runners and slavers with the aid of a loyal native chief. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's part of this film. Um, so I took a screenshot of this film here. Okay, uh, where did I put that? You didn't send it to me to post for the Wednesday dudes. Uh, yeah, I didn't. <laughs> um, hold up, hold up, hold up. I got it. I got you covered here, baby, mm-hmm. baby, baby. Uh, oh, <clears throat> so this is a title card uh, from the film. Africa. Tens of millions of natives under British rule. Each tribe with its own chieftain governed and protected by a handful of white men whose everyday work is an unsung saga of courage and efficiency. What, can you describe what um, what efficiency means in this context? <laughs> Potentially for me, please. Gunboat up down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just, just, just slaughter people <laughs> because it's like, well, they're I mean, yeah, they're slavers. Uh, they're kidnapped the our guy's like wife. Uh, <laughs> it's time to time to teach him a lesson. Uh, and for for fun, for funsies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, what did you? So that's how this movie kicks off. Sure. Because it also. Oh yeah, I think like the production company of this is London Films. <laughs> so this is like some real uh, heart of the empire uh, mentality going on. This is going to be some 
unapologetic uh, celebration uh, of and and speaking to the necessity of colonialism and how mm-hmm. yeah you know what you might not like us but we're actually doing you a favor so shut the fuck up said so, listen pal I'm doing you a favor by being here okay no. just how about a little gratitude <sighs> how about a little gratitude um so what Paul Robeson is in the sure. movie. Uh, what's his character's sure name, RJ? Is. In Sanders of the River? Yeah. Jared, I don't know if I could tell you what Paul Robeson's name was in any of the films we've watched, like oh. his character's name. Well, it's it's Bo Sambo. <laughs> Bo Sambo, hey? So there's a lot of people saying Sambo, and you go, oh. oh my God. <laughs> okay. I, uh, yeah, that's a, that's like a, a classic, like, Idaho name, right? Sambo? Yep. Or something? Uh, Sambo is like not them. a great, it's not a great one, RJ. It's a, no? It's not, so, it, does, it doesn't have great connotations, let me tell you. So it got, uh, some history to it? Some, yeah. It's something that, you know. Some weight? Some, some, some types would just call any black person they run into. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Cool. Good start. Good start. Yeah. So. Uh, the plot of this film, well, yeah, uh, it's just, oh, man, this is really going to put Sanders over, played by uh, this fella, Leslie Banks. Again, mm-hmm. one of our uh, favorites here, who died in 1952. Oh, uh, I'll just mention, so, you know that uh, Alfred Hitchcock was going to direct this movie at some point? Uh, he was? or Or you're just making that up? Um, no, apparently he was, uh, he, that was the, it was a production thing. Okay. Do you Which, think that he wanted to direct this film? Uh, I don't know. Maybe it was like a job and then he went <laughs> pass. Cause this, this, cause this movie feels pretty cheap. Like those, those, right. r- those, uh, rooms with, with the Colonel, it's like, oh yeah, this, uh, doesn't have a lot of scope to it. That could be any subway in, 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 in North exactly. America. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, the plot. Let me just read through this thing. Mm-hmm. Even at uh, ninety, it actually was ninety-eight minutes. That seems a little long, but uh, so this this is of course available, folks, on the Criterion Channel, and I think YouTube too. So, no excuses. Mm-hmm. Sanders is a colonel, or sorry, colonial district commissioner in the colonial Nigeria. He tries to administer his province fairly, including the various tribes comprising the peoples of the river. He is regarded with respect by some and with fear by others, among whom he is referred to as Sandy and Lord Sandy. He has an ally in Bosambo, a literate and educated tribal chief, played by the African American actor Paul Robeson. It should also be noted that uh, he's like a con man. Uh, yeah. Like that's the whole he, thing is like he shows up, but he's like kind of like a grifter, uh, who's like you know, educated in the sense that he's like you know he's got street smarts and he's he's navigated mm-hmm. the the world, uh, but he gets kind of installed <laughs> as this like, um, uh proxy leader i guess that, that that sanders can control and and continue a relationship with and keep the peace mm-hmm. uh because down river uh mm-hmm. you've got another you have another uh chief king mafalaba who is a uh, he's like the bad guy chief because his because sure his, his tribe still practices slave trading and slave raids and stuff like that yeah. so he's bad right so i get yeah slavery's bad but this idea that oh well, it's only it's only colonel the colonial leader sanders who can protect everybody um from this yeah uh and that's like what does what does Britain get out of this? Apparently, just being good guys. They're just like they're the police. So it's like because this is still like this is 1935. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're, we're kind of approaching the, the the end of the the empire like, over the next 20 years. So this is still like going to be propping things up quite a bit. A lot of legwork uh, pu- pushing this uh, story along. Mm-hmm. I mean, you might ask what England's getting out of it, and it's just it's a service. To the queen, you know, yeah. that's what she would have wanted. That's what she would like. Yeah. Uh, I don't think uh, the queen wasn't there yet. She, she's not quite the queen. We got a king still. Jared, it's a service to the queen. To the queen, right? The okay. future one. Understand. 
So yeah. So when so what? Anyways, there was like an exchange between uh, Sanders and uh, Mofalba about like these raids. He's like, "Hey, dude, you're getting kicked down the river." And the king's yeah. like, he talks about how he has the skins of his enemies stretched on shields. He's Who like, "That's him? what happens to Medu." cross me and he's yeah. like oh yeah he's like you know like, yeah it is and you kind of go that's kind of that's kind of cool i guess and then mm-hmm. he's just got sk- he's skinning men yeah. <laughs> it's like oh it's uh you know 1935 this is um some pulpy action going on here with all yeah. that that entails um so anyway so the king starts of course like using the opportunity because uh sanders goes on leave i think he goes back to england um, and so he's able to say, Hey, it, our time, it's our time is now it's time. Cause Sandy's dead. Cause that's what they're, and now we can like seize power and push back against this. Uh, cause that's bad. You know, the, the British are, are, uh, I don't know. It's just like this idea that, ah, oh, only the British are the, they're the good guys and everyone else is like bad unless they follow what the British say. Weirdly enough, th- those, mm-hmm. those two sides come together, but if you're against it, uh, you're you're probably skinning people and putting them on your shields. I mean, and then like there's I of said course, earlier, who hasn't? So these conflicts arise, which of course you know. Yeah. How? Why would these conflicts arise in a, in another land? Uh, perhaps because of uh, foreign influence uh, and in, you know, influence peddling and resources and uh, wealth being spread, and then you have uh, people coming in, um, gun tr- gun runners. Uh, mm-hmm. and slavers who are like trying to capitalize on the situation, being like, oh, well, you want to fight a war with other tribes? Well, I can provide you with all kinds of weaponry so you make, to ensure that your victory mm-hmm. in that. So bad dudes, bad dudes making things uh, worse Some because things were bad anyway that we created. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, we've got, yeah, the, the Paul Robeson character, Bosambo, he's kind of depicted as the good guy because he's like and he starts sl- slipping into his role because there's also the whole thing where he's of course saying i'm a good christian but then when he meets his wife she's a muslim and he's like well i'm a good muslim mm-hmm. yeah you know he's he's, he's, well, slipped, he's, he's, he's playing all his cards yeah exactly you know and then, so that he always comes out on top yeah so anyway uh he winds up having a child with this mm-hmm. woman because oh yeah because they kind of like save her from uh yeah getting uh married into this uh the King Mofalaba guy's uh, house and become mm. one of his many women. And I mean, she's like, like then they explain, I guess the appeal of that about, about power RJ. Well, I mean, first you get the, the power and you get, then the you get, and then you the get money. The, the, the money, my, you get the, the money. money, you get the power. Then you and, get the the, and then the women, there you go. You know, you know, the thing that a lot of people like to say all the time. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> so anyway, um, so we get some like scenes of f- combat. Uh, I-, I haven't mentioned the the sweet beats, the Paul Robeson killing song <laughs> that like you hear sporadically. That's mm-hmm. pre- it's pretty catchy. Uh, mm-hmm. But we get some we get some raids on villages and stuff like that. Uh, I think King Mofalab is like a good pulpy villain or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh yeah, because he kidnaps uh, Basambo's wife takes her back because he's he knows he's gonna lure him in to get her and then he shows up mm-hmm. he's like hey i'm here now you can let my wife go she'll send you two thousand dollars he's like no 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 i'm gonna kill you slow and then i'm gonna let you i'm gonna kill your wife in front of you <laughs> mm-hmm. and then and then uh sanders comes back and he's like oh no we can't leave because this is what's going to happen mm-hmm. we gotta we gotta help save the day this is why then, people need the British. That's why we need the British, okay? That's what we're necessary. And they go in, and they mow down the bad guys. <laughs> mm-hmm. And, uh, and they say, don't worry, guys. We'll take care of these guys and, for you. And Sanders is the hero. Um, mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, so yeah, so Basambo kills uh, the king, and then he becomes the king of the peoples of the river. Because, mm-hmm. oh, so RJ... Have we watched a more racist film in the Criterion Collection at this point? Um, <laughs> I mean, good God, I it's, think uh... it's wild because there's like no like because often like even with these movies, there's a little bit of um, uh, 
Here's a little Criti- bit here a little, there. A little critique going on. This is yeah. like a full-on embrace. This is like oof, colonialism. Why not more? I mean, the Italian movies are bad for certain things, but... Because this is like the collection. Yeah. You, you, you have Battle of Algiers, uh, and then yeah. you have Sanders of the River, and it's like, man, I don't know. I don't know how to pitch this thing. Like, this is something I, I can't even rate uh, because it's just like, man... <laughs> <laughs> what a, this is this is an artifact. This is a a, a breakdown of the motivation of it uh, of making yeah. the film. It's something. Who do you think um, was the the motivate like the the power behind this movie it was like this is the one. Who do you think was behind the Paul Robeson box set in general? In, in general, was like this is what we need. This is uh this is what the world needs right now. Yeah, you know what I mean. So. I was one I'll throw out here. So this this is a fresh hot off of Wikipedia because you got to go. Well, how the fuck did Paul Robeson get involved with this thing? I guess yeah. like he's an actor. He takes mm-hmm. roles, um, but this guy also uh, seems to like pretty be. He had his own like he had, he thought for himself, and you know he was a civil rights activist. Uh, and you'd be kind yeah. of like, and you know, you'd be a man you'd be like, what the fuck? So. The African American singer and actor Paul Robeson, a civil rights activist, there you go, accepted mm-hmm. the role of Basamba while living in London. At the time, he was studying the roots of pan African culture through studies of language and music. Robeson mm-hmm. felt that if he could portray the Nigerian leader Basamba with cultural accuracy and dignity, he could help audiences, especially black audiences, to understand and respect the roots of black culture. He took mm-hmm. the role on the condition that the film would portray Africans positively. The filmmakers took an unusual step towards authenticity by sending a film crew on a four-month voyage into remote areas of Africa. You know, the Mm -hmm. gigantic continent that it is. They recorded traditional African dances and ceremonies with the intention of using this footage integrated with scenes shot in the studio that included the future president and prime minister of Kenya, Jomo Kenyatta, as one of the extras. After the filming, Robeson was asked to return to the studio for retakes of some scenes. He discovered that the film's message had been changed during editing. It seemed to support the continuation of colonial rule in Africa, a message which Robeson disagreed with. No kidding. The finished film was dedicated to the handful of white men whose everyday work is an unsung saga of courage and efficiency. God damn yeah. it. Robeson also discovered his character, Pasambo, had been changed during the editing process from a proud leader to a servile lackey of the uh, colonial administration. He mm-hmm. said, this is a quote, the, imperial, the imperialist plot had been placed in the plot during the last day, last days, five days of shooting. I was roped into the picture because I wanted to portray the culture of the African people, and I committed a faux pas, which convinced me that I had failed to weigh the problems of 150 million Native Africans. I hate the picture. In 1938, Robeson added despairingly, it is the only film of mine that can be shown in Italy or Germany, for it shows the Negro as fascist states desire him, savage and childish. Robeson was so disillusioned by the picture that he attempted, but failed, to buy all of the prints to prevent them from being shown. Yay! <laughs> I'm so gl- I'm so glad it's in the fucking collection. <laughs> like what the fuck? <laughs> it's like it's one of the. It's crazy. It's it's, it's so it's so bizarre because I'm glad you know I I didn't re- I had not read that when I watched it, but yeah. I was like watching this being it's like good lord. <laughs> You're like, why? Well, it's one of those things that said, I know part of the criterion is like, uh, like document or like keeping these historical movies, but it's like, you know, some things are, some things are okay to let die, you know? <laughs> well, I honestly, no, like, no one's watching this fucking thing. No one talks about it. Uh, the fact that it's in this collection is, it's in, in the Paul Robeson collection, a movie that he hated. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, let's put that in there too. It's just to show like how far we've come. <laughs> you go, okay. Yeah. But I don't know. I mean, it's just you like, could... what do you say about this? I would never watch. I've never, I mean, unless someone's actually studying, um, ropes and something, theater. not even ropes. And just like, I guess depictions of colonialism, like, pro colonialist films. I mean, you'd watch it for that, I guess. Um, and like, they are, they are trying to do certain things with it where they're presenting like action scenes where you're like, Oh, these are kind of exciting scenes, but what a, what an ugly fucking movie. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll give it this. 
Yeah. It's a movie that was made. Yeah. So it's got that going for it. Yeah. Which is pretty good. But man, there's there's a lot there's a lot of things you could be watching that are 98 minutes long. Oh. Oh yeah. Plenty. Plenty. Yeah. So yeah, not a fan. <laughs> Uh, oh, oh, really? Quite, quite, quite the, quite the surprise. I thought you'd be into this movie, based on how you've been talking about it. No, uh, yeah, it's based on stories by Edgar Wallace, uh, who is one of those. Um, oh no, am I thinking of the British or the German guy? Uh, yeah, maybe I'm thinking of a different dude. Ed, did you write King Kong? Uh. Oh, not I, think, the origi- I, think, I think he wrote, he wrote the, the not the original King Kong, but the Peter Jackson one. Ah, I see. He yeah. fell through the time hole. Well, I mean, Jared, holes are crazy. He, he loved writing about Africa. Whether time based or not, holes are pretty crazy. But, whew, yeah, man, yeah. So anyway, that, I could I could go on. I don't I don't know. I'm not sure what the defense is uh, or whatever. There's but. not there. That's a like not every movie needs a defense, right? Because mm-hmm. like I, I know, there's none. Like I don't know. It's just one of those movies where like holy shit. It's 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 like it's like I said earlier. Like um, some people are like, well, you have to maintain the history. It's like you know, if we had a camera 600 years ago, we could have footage of people shitting their pants on each other. And it's like. Because it's 600 hey, years old, is th- it worth th- th- keeping? Th- things were different back then. Is, uh, so, something yeah, that I know. And I'll go, you know what? I'll go, it's like, no, what? No, 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 no. Not everyone was okay with this either. Like, clearly, yeah. it's like, no, they weren't. It's, it's, mm-hmm. it's Some people might want to excuse shit like that, but it's like, ugh. So let thanks. me introduce you to Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> brother. No, no, no. No. Oh. Anyway, Dad, yeah. No, no, no. Not a, not a great time. Uh, yeah, so I watched cinema. this movie. Yeah, RJ, what do you, what do you think? <laughs> tell tell me why you love this movie. Um, no, no, just no. Uh, I I didn't get um, like I you have uh you have some some strong feelings for this. I was watching it and mostly I was just kind of like, I don't care. <laughs> but I, there there is a lot of like, there was a lot of scenes that I was like, hmm. Like uh, I think when he's like first in in front of like the the British dudes like groveling, he's like he's like I'm gonna be a good man for you. I'm gonna be the the guy. I'm gonna be whatever you want me to gonna be. And I was like, I was kind of like, what is this movie gonna be? Like I didn't look into it. I was like, what's this movie about? Because that's like the opening scene. Uh-huh. I, I was watching that and I was like, oh. And then uh, yeah, the championing of the dudes, it's. Not great. Uh, I mean, I think the scenes of the like the native peoples like dancing and stuff. I think that's cool. But at the same time, I was like, oh, that's neat. They like film these people's like celebrations. But then I was also like, they were probably forced to do this, and maybe their celebrations aren't like supposed to be filmed. Hey. You know, like like storytelling stuff. It's like, well, not everyone is allowed to share the story, and not everyone's allowed to hear the story. Well, so, so I was kind of like, maybe we're not supposed to be well, seeing It reminds me of this, like, anthropo- uh, those issues with anthropology, where it's like, oh, yeah. this is what they do. And you go, or not. Maybe they're doing it because the camera's on. So obviously this is like, oh, staging this stuff. Uh, yeah. I mean, this yeah. is like, this is one of uh, that the great tradition of the Italian Mondo film, which is like documenting, oh, yeah. isn't this crazy? Isn't this unlike anything else you've ever seen? Uh-huh. Yeah. And then, well, and, I mean, yeah. there's a little bit of that too. Like, it, it's like, it is a cliche of, uh, was it in Body and Soul, where it opens up with this, like, some, like you know, whatever, like, you know, pan-African performance dance and then it transitions to like baptist church uh there's like there, yes. there's that crossfade there uh, or maybe was that was that emperor jones like I, it's we were watching so many of these movies back to back um it blurs Who could fucking remember yeah one of these movies though you just go oh my god this is it yeah. this is this is what movies were uh so I, do, do i have to one that do does i it. do i have to like it it's like i say no I don't. You don't have to you like, don't have to like any anything, but which movies. is which annoys me more is because I can hear someone out there going, oh, "That's not how you can watch movies. That's not how you enjoy. That's not how you enjoy yeah. art." And you go, "Fuck yourself." <laughs> hey, fuck I, the empire. Fuck <laughs> the empire. <laughs> Hashtag. Listen, it's it's the best thing they've done in years. Okay, they're back to their roots. Yeah, I know. I mean, you don't have to like anything, and oh. yeah, all I gotta know, Jared, is where would you rank this? 
uh, like from here to sweetie oh this honestly i, I mean this is at the bottom by default of yeah. my list because it's just like i I can't i'm not going to rate this like what do i say yeah. i don't know if it just it feels like oh I don't. Yeah. Would you? I wonder if I put this into like the same rank as like it's like propaganda that mm-hmm. is I find objectionable. So, how do you even <laughs> classify these things? Uh, it's like yeah, it's, you, you it's don't a even film. Have to. It, it, this is a product. It sure. is. It is a product, and I was like, I don't want that product. I don't want anywhere. I don't. I, it's well, kind of like it's like being sent stuff. I, can you imagine being like a professional reviewer of thing like something like not film but yeah. of products? And they send things to you, and you go, "How do you think this works for you? Does this communicate?" And then, but you're being sent products from like the 1935 like, State mm-hmm. Department of England, because this movie was a commercial success. People sure. people liked what they did see on the screen, or some people were craving this sort of imagery on the screen, and they wanted sure. to go see it because they're like, "Yeah, see," but that doesn't mean it's good. It's just that what it is. And mm-hmm. the further away we get from it, uh, it's like, whoa. This is the a, further we the, stray from yeah. God, and we'll and there's, there'll be shit all around us that you know as we get away from it, we'll go holy fuck. So yeah. we can't win. There's, there's no like we, it's a one upsmanship game with this stuff. But yeah, this is just true. Like, oh, tough, tough yeah. sell. <laughs> so you're telling me there's a chance. There's a chance, eh? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not good that they made this. I don't There's know what else to say other than can't this do is much probably about not it. a good one. Yeah, this one's not a good one. This one's not a good one. Yeah. So that's too bad. <laughs> that's too bad. Yeah. But here oh, it is. Well, Paul Robeson, hey? What a guy. Well, he, he didn't uh, make it. Hey, how about how about Jericho? Jericho. I uh You wanna break the walls down? Uh you should put that song in here somewhere. I probably should. You maybe, should. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe. And the outro. Yeah. Maybe, potentially. Um, I think this does this have another name? Uh, AKA like Dark, Sands Dark Sands. Yeah, okay. Dark Sands. So Jericho is kind of a strange one because uh, it also has like problematic stuff in it uh, a bit. Not as not nearly as bad, but uh, uh, when this started, it was like a Navy movie. I was like, hey, cool, Navy movie. And then when the ship was like sinking, I was like, and people were just like dying. I was like, I was like, I'm kind of into this. I like seeing people explode sure. on this boat. Mm-hmm. I was like, that's cool. And then it leaves the boat for a while. And I was like, hey, go back to the boat. I was like, I want to see more of the boat. What? Why is this movie called? Why is it called Dark Sands? Why is it not called Dark Waters? Yeah, I was like, where's the where's the waters here? And then you get some camel action for a while. Um, you get some people fighting. You get some cam- uh, camels. You have some documentary filmmaking. You have people in movie theaters. You have long lost uh, relatives. This movie might have it all, Jared. Am I saying it's good? No, but it might have it all. So, you know what I mean? So this, so this is movie Jericho from 1937, yeah. directed by again Thornton Freeland. Yeah. Uh, oh, no, no sweet tagline like he breaks loose in the jungle, but <laughs> again, did he? Um, but it's, yeah. but yeah, Sanders of the River. Uh, did you like the song? That gets uh, that that motif that they keep going back to, uh, in Sanders or yeah, in Jericho. In Sanders, I can't even remember what it oh. was. It's not too bad. Yeah. Uh, I can't even get, remember. Uh, so Jericho, um, an unjustly condemned corporal flees to Africa, chased by the captain blamed for his escape. I mean, not quite. Not quite. Not quite the case. Not quite the yeah, case. Yeah, so... It's a real Forrest Gump type of movie, hey? You know about Gump picks? Uh, is that where, like, people kind of just, like, fall into significant historical moments haphazardly? Yeah, yeah you got Boatman, and then you got Shipwreck Man, and then you have, Nate, like, uh, Military, like, Jail Man, and then you have Medical Doctor Man, and then you have, like, Farmer Man, but then you have, like... Uh, clan leader man or not like like you know what i mean but like clan like uh like tribe leader man and then you have like messiah man and then you have like vigilante man okay so jericho is yeah. the british because it's a british film again um yeah. that's the title of it in the uk in america it was called dark sands <laughs> but why um 
You'd have to ask U.S. distributors about that in 1937. Okay. Uh, so I kind of have a little background on this film, Jericho. Paul Robeson considered Jericho one of his most positive accomplishments in projecting a screen image of a black man with courage, honor, self-sacrifice, and intelligence who achieves success and happiness. Robeson's first British film, Sanders of the River, ended up being an embarrassment for the actor. Maybe that's why it's in the collection, to be like, look at these two extremes, but... I'm not sure, mm-hmm. I, and I, I don't know, because I don't have the box set to look at, how it's Damn. positioned in the collection or explained. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's story turning into a celebration of British colonialism. Robeson felt betrayed by the production team and sought without success to buy all circulating prints. As a result, Robeson demanded artistic control over the final cut of this film. For example, the ending was to be that Jericho, homesick, agrees to help clear the captain's name in the United States. After their plane crashes in the desert, Jericho dies trying to save Captain Mac. Instead, Robeson simply requested that the movie end with the captain flying off alone. Spoilers. Mm. Uh, that's good. I mean, that's a that's a good it's like. What, no, this movie's really good. Like, it's a good honestly, yep. it's a it's a good ending. It's actually yeah, it is. Yeah, rather than oh, I got to punish him. Like yeah. like for I, what I for, for doing what it... he helped people. Yeah, I think I I, I liked it too because it's kind of sweet. You're like the guy sees the influence this guy has and he's like you know maybe i spent five years in jail yeah it's a fucked up but i story. guess it's yeah. not this dude's fault yeah this is a- prime for a remake with like mark ruffalo and um tony todd i think is who you would put in those two roles <laughs> always tony todd <laughs> he's, he's the best who doesn't like tony todd <laughs> you know or 50 cent could do it okay yeah He's acted. He's in movies. Hmm. So this movie's set during WW1. WW2 yeah. is on the horizon, RJ. And yeah, this, this, this this could almost be like a, a B-roll side to Lawrence of Arabia. I mean, it could be. Could is be. it going to be? No. I don't know. No. Could, uh, movies depicting kind of uh, the, the, the 20s, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, <clears throat> a World War One American troop ship is torpedoed. And many soldiers are trapped below the deck. Jericho Jackson, a medical student drafted into the war, heroically saves the trapped man in defiance of his superior's orders to abandon ship, but accidentally kills the officer in the melee. Despite yeah. his heroism, Jericho is court martialed for refusing orders. Embittered, he escapes. <laughs> like, what? I don't know about that. I don't know if he was embittered. He was, like, about to go to... I think he was going to get like a, a kind of a serious reprimand too, like real jail time. Cause if actually he was being charged with murder, I yeah. think like of killing an officer. It's like, yeah. Cause it's like, well, you killed the wrong man. <laughs> Paul Robeson. I mean, I mean, who hasn't? So anyway, um, he's kind of allowed out to do something. I can't remember what it was, uh, but he gets an opportunity to escape and he does mm-hmm. successfully. Uh, Gets to pretend to be a French man, uh, mm-hmm. and then the, the 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 troops trying to f- track him down because he's going he's ru- he's running. They just mm-hmm. see right past him because he talk he talks French, and that's in their mind we're looking for an American man. So he escapes, um, catches a boat. I think. Uh, yeah. Yep. He hops onto a boat. Real hops quick. On boat. Yep. Yeah. And he, off he goes, and off he goes to uh, I guess uh, North Africa. Uh, he he teams up, he has a team up, with he does? Uh, with like uh, with actor I think it's like Wallace Ford who plays Mike Clancy. He he talks about he's a real I don't know East Coast guy. Say hey, you ever have a clam bake on the beach? Oh, exactly. kind of like, like that. Yeah, yeah, that's East Coast. So, baby. So they start doing some. They're going to have some swindles, some scandals. Uh, they're, they're trying to like shake down people, pull some fast ones, and make a little bit of scratch. Yeah. Um, but things just, uh, they're, they're always kind of on the run because they're like, do you got any papers? And they're like, no, no, we don't. Papers? They, they, they I hide, got your papers they, right they here. Hide, they, they hightail out of it. Uh huh. Um, so, anyways, eventually, I mean, uh, they, they kind of, things are going great. Jericho meets a, meets a lady. Um, I guess also they always make up a point of like, she's Muslim. Yeah. They, they do like to emphasize uh, the, the, these films are always like, and they're Muslims. And did we mention 
they're Muslim. Yeah, it's per, it, per chance. It's this thing, <laughs> the, yeah. the '30s. They really wanted to let you know that. Yeah, well, I'm in uh, it's the an, Red Menace, right? It's an, it's an alien culture, RJ. Yeah. They're not Christians, is what we're saying. But it, but hey, left. but so this guy though, he's got real skills. He's got some yeah, medical abilities. You know, he can keep, mm-hmm. he can take care of the sick and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's got a little bit of military training. And he he winds he winds up becoming basically the leader of this like tribe uh, living out in the desert. Um, mm-hmm. And we get some we get some some sparks that fly uh, with other groups, but he's seizing it. Uh, but then, so with the B side of this is, of course, that we have old poor Captain Mac back at home. Uh, mm-hmm. He's kind of said, hey, you let him escape. And he's like, well, I didn't. I, and he's he kind of like a, maybe a little bit allowed it to happen a little bit, but he didn't actually help him escape. No. That's, that's my interpretation of it. <laughs> but, but of course, Jericho, Captain, uh, or whatever, Corporal Jericho is not around to back this up. So mm-hmm. it's like, sorry, dude, you're going to jail for five years. Yeah, I was kind of, they're like, well, scene says this guy's gone and he can't, like, tell the story. We're going to hit you with uh, with what we can, okay? And so that's just the way yep. it is, baby. And then five years pass. This guy mm-hmm. gets out. He's like, motherfucker, I'm going to find that Jericho. I'm going to, wherever he is in the world, I'm going to track his ass down and drag him back. So so to clear my name. That's yeah. his That's his goal. That is it, uh, and yeah. it's it's kind of a it's a fascinating thing from like this like hu- hu- hubrisy kind of idea. It's like so you just wait like so five years of your life just got snatched away from you, and you want revenge now on like a guy that you know is like a good man, but you're like oh that guy fucked me, now I want, but he, I want to get him, and he's because mm-hmm. but thing so by getting him he's going to bring him back, and this guy's going to you know, go on trial for a murder that he ran away from, which looks even worse. And, you know, it's like, he's a black man in the U.S. military who's, who's killed a man. So it's like, oh, yeah, they're really going to mm. give him a fair shape. So he does. He spends years tracking him down. Instead of, like, moving on, uh, I, I started thinking of, like, the searchers, that kind of story of, like, a person that just keeps seeking. You're like, oh, he can't, he's, he doesn't seem like that bad of a guy probably in this story. He's, like, not, like, a, he doesn't do, like, anything particularly dastardly so mm-hmm. you're like eh, i don't know if he's gonna be able to pull the trigger or do anything like in the metaphorical one where he's actually going to do what he says he's going to do doesn't really make sense story-wise and once he gets there and he sees it like oh he's he's got a whole life set up and stuff like that and it's like he's actually really integral to the to the the community uh that he finds himself in uh he gets a lead though because like this uh actually a, a anthropology film crew comes across oh, wow. the group what a coincidence Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, the he, this newsreel gets to the hands of Mac, and it's like, "Aha! This is him. I got him." He said, "Finally, yeah, got him." So he, he he chases him down. He shows up, and he's just like, "I'm going to take you with me." He's like, "Uh, these guys won't let you take him." <laughs> mm-hmm. the, in fact, now that they know you're a danger to like their their you know their chieftain, their leader, they're they're going to kill you. <laughs> mm-hmm. They said, listen, dude, you've done everything wrong since yeah, you've gotten here. everything. You, you yeah. really dropped the ball. Uh, and then we get some exciting bits of, like, an escape. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, f- I forgot to mention the big... Uh, there's the, a battle? There's a, yeah, there's a battle. But there's also singing on the dune. Because yeah. you, you can't so, keep him down from singing. I mean, <laughs> so... Paul Robeson's always singing. Always and singing. In, in these two movies, it felt particularly a little out of place. Mm-hmm. And especially in the last film. Dark Sands, yeah. Yeah, but that's uh, in Sanders. Jericho. That one had a, a little bit more where you went, would he be singing this song? Well, it's always off camera, though, in yeah. Sanders, right? It's like more of like, this, like the theme. And it, yeah. And it's like, oh, it's, your, it's the killing music. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's cool. So yeah, we got a thing where, uh, so yeah, I wrote. I think it's like a Jericho's like, you know what, man? Uh, so I got to go. I got to get. I got to go with back with you, kind mm-hmm. of thing. Uh, yeah, you know what? You're right. I I, I screwed you. I screwed mm-hmm. you good. Uh, I will. So go, let me make it good. Uh, I'll make good on it, man. You're right. And then he's like, oh, <laughs> I think Max like okay. And then they start getting on the plane, but there's a big chase because. Uh, I guess the rest of the tribe's not going to let that happen because they're going to get their hands on Mac and mm-hmm. do away with him. 
And Jericho's like, I can't let that happen. So there's a whole escape, and it's like, oh, I'm getting, get, get, we can't get the plane started this way. I got to get out of it. And then Mac just realizes, I can't take this guy with me. He's trying to help mm-hmm. me. And it's like, so he, he flies away without Jericho. So everybody gets what they want. Because at the end mm-hmm. of the day, it's like, well, Mac's already done his five years, and he realizes that what's the, what's the point of this? No, nope. after another like you know two years probably of looking for this man, mm-hmm. um, so yeah, it has, it has this like nice you know, little poetic ending. Uh, I mean, the movie's <laughs> kind of whatever at the end of the day, um, but I mean, it's it's better. I mean, I think by default, just than uh, Sanders. <laughs> the colonel yeah yeah i mean it's like i was saying earlier i think this movie kind of does have it all i don't think it's great or anything like that but it's got it's got it all in there like it's it's got the gump approach we have a boat man and then we have doctor man and then we have savior man and then he's like war man and stuff like that like he kind of goes through all those things and uh, i i did like um there's some stuff in it that I think is good. Like, uh, I did like the film crew when he's watching it and they're discussing the camels. Uh, I thought the mm. way that they're, t- they're talking about the camels. No, some of it's not good, but some of it was kind of funny. Uh, and I was just like, Hey, that's a, that's a funny thing they're doing. Um, so it's got a little bit of all of that. And Paul Robeson is like, he's the star. So it's like, yeah, it's cool. He's like given basically like the, the spotlight on this and, and that's uh, probably not what happens all the time because then there's movies like Sanders where he just has to do that. And you go, oh, you go, oh, that's too bad. Um, so Jericho's got it's got a little bit of a little bit for everybody. Jared, yeah. it's got a little bit of a, a little bit for everybody. You know what I mean? A little bit. So yeah. I'm just curious and like how many people have ever watched sanders of the river and it's like it's le- like uh, l- 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 less than 500 it's like 400 okay. and change uh, on letterboxd mm. but i mean how many people are doing this uh this long haul i mean there's probably people who own the paul ropeson collection who have never watched either of these movies they just yeah. they just have it how many you un- did i ask you last week how many units do you think the paul ropeson collection has sold hard to say at least one Hard to say. <laughs> Probably at least one. Uh, you want to hear from people who hate Sanders of the River more, or just you? Well, they, I mean, they're enough. They they they're enough to rate it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, I, can you only imagine? Um, I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it. Got from Naya. Uh, okay. I have a star. Bitch, so racist. Paul Robeson's voice is splendid, though, so half a star. Sorry you were tricked into doing this movie, Paul. I mean, yeah, this person just four-star death becomes her, so I'm on board with that. That movie rules. Um, I'm going to so. run through some of these. So we got Lucas Elzer, yeah. uh, half a star. Watch for post-colonial cinema. This is not the one, guys. <laughs> How would you watch it for that? I don't know. I guess uh, you want to watch something colonial cinema and then there's posts so you, sometimes you need a frame of reference so yeah. you gotta go back and go holy smokes here's a quick bump on Lucas I like films I wanna make them you can follow me and read my takes or not doesn't matter Ox, how about Ozzy Beastius Ozzy Beastius is that like Ozzy Manteus Ozzy Beastius F okay. This is, and I say this without any kind of exaggeration, one of the worst movies I have ever seen. Blatantly racist without any likable characters. Not even Paul Robeson could save this. It offers nothing of value to the world of cinema. Forget it and move on. Proud member of Film Independent Spirit Awards. (laughs) I will watch as many Oscar-nominated movies as I can before 2028. The Centennial... 20, Acad- 2028. 2028. The Centennial Academy Awards. I am also going through every year of the Academy Awards and choosing my own winners. If that sounds interesting to you, it does feel, not. F- feel free to check out my lists I have made from the years I have completed. Mm-hmm. So, are you going to check those out? Changing Reels, half a star. Okay. <laughs> Colonialist porn for old Tories to win to. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> Paul Robeson wanted and deserves better. 
Oh man, yeah. this is great. Um, man, yeah, people are not not a big, not big fans. Oh, there's someone here. That's okay. Yora Chang, twenty two. Bosambo was deaf, a wife guy. Yeah, he was like a ride or die for for the ladies. Yeah, he liked his he liked his ladies. He liked his ladies. Uh, what else did this person give a half a star to? Oh, they didn't give this a half a star, but they they half a star to old. This Shyamalan movie, that's cool. You know about old? You know about Shyamalan? You know about that? What about the people who love the movie? Do you think, how many of them yeah. are, do you think there are? I don't know. Creeper, 3455. Five. Even Criterion has an in, uninteresting shit face or two. That's cool. People who love this movie? I don't know, man. People I don't really want to hang out with. Um, this person wrote a huge review. Um, hmm. How about how about this username? Men write one two three four. What do you think men are right about, Jer? Men write five five stars. Oh. Interesting film by the Cordas with Paul Robeson and Nina May McKinn. It's playing the film forum on the twenty third. This is from November of last year. McKinn is great, and so is Robeson. I love his singing here more than ever. There are long vocal passages and elaborate filmed in Africa dance numbers. Leslie Banks is also really good. I o- I always think of most dangerous game when I see him. Always fascinating to watch such effusive praise for the British Empire from a couple Hungarians. Although it's oh. unique, I understand Robeson's bitterness to the finished movie. Corda films are real romanticizers of empire. I mean, yeah. This person just five-starred that blonde movie that just came out. So they did that. <laughs> it's cool, I guess. Oh, well. Not a lot of ratings, this person. But men right, I I suppose, hey? Mm-hmm. And then there's one person... That, there's not very many... That's like the... There's like a few of these weird mm-hmm. accounts uh, from one... Bra, 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 bra. And then down below, three three stars. Badly dated. <laughs> three stars. I mean... Sure. I why, guess. Why, I why rate it at all? These people get so caught up on rating shit. Ratings. Shmatings. They don't have to rate stuff. How about... Jericho. Like, break those the walls? Chris? The walls? Judas Effect? Oh, my God. Maybe. Um, Jerry Hudson. Robeson had to move to England to get decent roles. Okay. I mean, that's, like, more of, like, an opinion. This person's got a bio. <laughs> Film fan. Weakness for foreign. Get DVDs from local main <laughs> library. Weakness for foreign. That's all it says. It's a sentence. Weakness for foreign. <laughs> Weak to them. Often get DVDs from local main library. Often get DVDs home and realize had no idea what requested. One time turned to partner said, I am the only who... Am I the only who could accidentally rent a six and a half hour German movie and then decide I have to watch it? This sort of thing does happen to me often. But find, <laughs> but find my instincts are pretty good. Have good quality film average. Though all of those fazbinders are certainly debatable, but still can enjoy trash, especially so bad. It's wonderful. I, I That wasn't me spinning. That, that's, that was verbatim how this person wrote that stuff, by the way. Just accidentally rented a six-hour German film. I'm so silly. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm such a card. Oh, man. <laughs> Goofy me. Chuck. Two stars. Nice action, adventure, suspense, with a bit of a history lesson. Paul mm. Robeson had some great pipes. <laughs> this is probably oh. the oldest film I've seen with a black American in the lead role. Enjoyed, but probably won't watch again. Chuck has a uh, bio, too. Uh-huh. Some film watching cat. I watch and re- I watch and review films for the a radio show. I don't know why that's funny to me. Uh, I don't know. They talk. They, I don't know. They're, they're talking about decades or something like that. I still have lots of decades of films to review. Yeah, man. There was movies made every decade. I don't know what what you're talking about. The review is like four fucking pages long. I'm not gonna or their bio. I'm not gonna read it, but. Not sure what this dude's talking about. 
Bad stuff. Bad stuff. Uh, there's a uh, one one of the people I follow, Punk Punks. Mm-hmm. Um, the production felt grander than the movie experience. Though little can be grand enough for Paul Robeson's gigantic voice, the story felt a little unfinished unless the message was that African Americans belong in Africa. Regardless of the exotic road to the desert, it was fun with little Wallace Ford next to the Black Giant, and also a good role for Henry Wilcoxon as his career was starting to fade. While the film didn't reach its peak, it was an all right Robeson showcase. I mean, but Punks is this... crazy. Like that, the the uh, they watch movies. Yeah, uh, this person watches movies. They watch like, things by like, movies within a calendar year that you would never be like, oh. I'm going to pop on some films from 1926 and watch all of them. I mean, they're from Norway. So yeah. like, you know how things are up there, right? Yeah. I know how things are. You know, you know, things in Norway. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Brian Cauley, a poorly made film. That's only interesting because it stars Paul Robeson and features a cast of largely minority actors, all embarrassing stereotypes. It even gets campy when Robeson climbs a sand dune, just to belt out a song from its peak. Robeson went to England to make this kind of film. He, c- he couldn't in America, but Jericho is no artistic triumph. Even though Robeson had final cut, the criterion restoration is of surprisingly poor quality. Uh, I don't know about that, but um, this person, one of their favorite films is Tarzan and his mate, Ooh. which uh, this person was talking about. They don't like the use of stereotypes. I, 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 I don't know about Tarzan, man. What does Tarzan say about the world? You know what I mean? What has Tarzan done for us lately? Uh, not enough. Let me you tell you. You know? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I mean that sounds sounds fine by me. Oh, was I'm, oh hey hey, you in here? Three stars. I've really been enjoying Criterion's Paul Robeson box set. Uh, this is from twenty twenty. Oh, oh yeah, uh, two years ago, November twenty twenty. Wait, is this the high reviews now? Uh, this is a three star. Oh okay. Uh, they're using like. Either it's a Christmas tree. Yeah, it's a Christmas tree. Oh, I star see. Thing. Okay. Yeah. His career is a fascinating one, and it wasn't long before he found more opportunities on the big screen. In European productions, with a number of British films in the late 30s on, Jericho follows an unhappy experience making Sanders of the River and gives him a stronger lead role. He plays the titular character, real name Jeremiah, a sailor mm-hmm. during World War One who disobeys a superior officer and rescues some trapped men, accidentally killing the officer in the process. He is court-martialed but escapes, but in the torturous way of movie plots, ends up taking up a new life as a leader amongst the Tureg people in the deserts of North Africa. It's an interesting portrait of camaraderie amongst black and white men during wartime and about the possibility of personal redemption for Jericho, who is essentially a good man and understood as such throughout the film, despite what happened. He gets a slightly annoying American sidekick on his journey to the Tarek Wallsford, and the final resolution with a fellow soldier who took the blame for his escape. Well, he didn't take the blame. He got the yeah. blame. Doesn't mm-hmm. quite have the emotional heft it probably needs, but it's a solid role for Robeson, and he gets the chance to exercise his vocal cords for a few occasions, too. <laughs> <laughs> Ewan, London, via New Zealand, and back again. They say some other stuff, but I just want to. They're just talking about where they lived, I okay. guess. Okay. So, yeah. All right. Not that that's bad. Yeah. Just, New Zealand just seems like a bad place, man. <laughs> a lot of rapists over there. A lot. Awful lot of bad dudes. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. Bad, bad. Any final thoughts on Sanders of the River or Jericho? Man, I can't wait until next week. We're almost there, son. We're almost there. I I, I love doing four week long deep dives. <laughs> Two movie double <laughs> into movies. double header after double header after double header. It's one of my favorite things <laughs> that we've ever done. This is the worst thing we've ever done. The worst. This might go down no. as it's like not even that. Like it's not even not that, that bad. It's just like no. It's just oh, the frequency of it. Yeah, it's it's a it's 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 a lot. It's a lot. Yeah, I mean, if these were spaced out by years, I'd be like, whatever. I, I, I mean, don't give a shit. At least they're all different directors. Like they're all different movies. That's Zoltan. 
yeah, they'll have a there. There's a variety. Sure, sure. But will we? But will we top Emperor Jones? I don't even. I don't even know if I'm gonna watch next week's movies. <laughs> Tur- you know what I mean. Tune in next week. Um, but in the meantime, after the break, I'm gonna I'm gonna help RJ get out of here on that airplane. Go home. Go Are home. you? Go home. Buddy. Does that mean you're gonna leave me? Well, you're leaving me. Or I'm, I'm leaving you. I'm, I'm gonna help you along. I'll be like, hey, I, I'm helping you. Like, be like, I don't want to leave. I go, no, you got to go. Get on that plane. It's like, I don't want to uh, go. And then I send you off and say, bye. I definitely leave you. 